Hi, I'm John Gebhardt, president of the Friends of the Log Cabins, and be aware you can visit the village anytime dawn to dusk and see these beautiful 1800 structures that were built by pioneers to this area. This sign welcomes you to the village, and I especially like the last statement, may all who pass this way reflect a bit from whence we came. Back in 1968, the Quincipi Island Heritage Foundation created this village by saving and moving these original 1800 structures here. The Dee Dee Hole Cabin was built in 1835 and was moved to the Log Cabin Village, and you're gonna have a tour of the cabin on the inside by one of our reenactors. Hello, my name is Eleanor Yackley. I'm here to give you a brief tour of the Hall cabin. Dee Dee Hall and his wife Suzanne built the cabin in 1835. It was erected here on the log, um, log cabin village site on Quincy, Quincy Island in 1968. It was moved in by the Rotary Club. The cabin originally was out in the county and was brought here piece by piece, marked pieces and reassembled here. Inside here is the picture of D.D. Hull and his wife Suzanne. They reared 13 children in the cabin. Not all of them lived here at one time, but they all were lived here at, at one time. They, they lived here, but they were not living in the house at all at the same time. Here we have a washstand with a basin and a pitcher. They didn't have running water piped into the cabin, but they had to go up to a spring or the creek and draw water. They would keep a pitcher of water inside the house here and a basin so that they could wash their hands when they came in. And it could also be used for washing vegetables or cleaning up other things when they brought things in from the garden. The towels were common community towels. Everybody in the family used the same towel and it was used until it was pretty well worn and then it was laundered and put it out a different one or the same towel and used it another week or two. Here we have a storage box. This would have been here to either store the things that they didn't need during the summer or during the winter, whichever, and they could have stored other things in there to keep the animals, the, like mice or other things, from getting into it. Over here we have a series of different things that could have been used here in the cabin. There's a coffee grinder. Most people drank coffee back in those days. Bowl, bread box, closed in to keep the mice out. Plates, cups, pitchers, bowls, whatever. The bottom had crocks, which would have been used for storing of their vegetables during the winter time, or their sausage, or their sauerkraut, or any other things that they needed to use for food preparation. Over here in the corner, we have a spice cabinet. This would have been used for their herbs that they dried from the garden. They would use sage for seasoning the sausage. They would use other things that they had for seasoning the food, making it more palatable. The, there was no indoor bathroom or plumbing, so we had a chamber pot, which would be used if somebody needed to go to the bathroom at night. If they needed to go to the bathroom during the daytime, they were expected to go outside, either to just into the woods or into a toilet if they had it at that time. Another bowl here. We have a colander here. Over here on the table, we have a oil lamp. This would have been used during the dark times when they needed light in the cabin. Uh, oil would be put in the bottom of the lamp and it would be, the chimney would be washed every morning and that way it would be ready to go for the next day. The lamp would be lit either using matches or a coal from the fireplace. Here in the fireplace you see the arm that holds the pot. Cooking was done often in just one or two pots. The arm would move the pot either from the hot part, which was the inner side, to the outer part of the fireplace. When they were first initially cooking it, it would be in the hot part of the fire, then they could move it out to keep it warm without burning the food. Along with this, we have here the coffee pot, which had been used for making the coffee. And then we have some sad irons here, which were irons to use to press clothing. They would be put by the fireplace to heat them up, and then they would be used to iron the clothes. A lot of the clothes were not ironed, and they didn't have permanent press. On top here we have some utensils that would have been used to stir the food or to dish it up. And we have a little tong here, could have been used to move the coals in the fireplace or even could have been used to pick up food out of the pots. We didn't mention here the, the upstairs loft. 
the family slept upstairs. They would have had a ladder to get up there. And the children would have slept all kind of in a row. The feather bed is used to keep warm, mostly in the winter, but could also be slept on. It would have been filled with either corn husks or goose down, duck down, whatever. The down is feathers off a of duck or goose. And they would have had quilts or other covers, blankets, whatever. Thank you for visiting the D.D. Ho 1800s Log Cabin. Uh, you can visit the village anytime from dawn to dusk. And uh, we uh, basically have a self-informational guided tour that's on our website that you can go visit. And you can either download it or you can reach it by Wi-Fi down here in the village. I would appreciate it if you'd sign our guest book so we know you visited to enjoy seeing these historic structures. And as the entrance sign says, may all who pass this way reflect a bit from whence we came. <laughs>